Hi guys, it's Dr. Eric Lindquist, CEO and founder of Sonopath.com, and I'd like to invite you to pass through your surgical or commuting day in veterinary medicine by listening to our podcast, Real Talk in Veterinary Medicine from experienced professionals who aren't afraid to tell you how things really are so you can optimize your veterinary career and your process. Welcome to Summer Talks again. My name is Peter Moller. I'm a veterinarian from Austria and I'm very pleased to interview Dr. Eric, Eric Lindquist, the diplomat of the American Board of Veterinary Practitioners, Canine and Feline, and the owner, CEO, and founder of Sonopath.com today. And by the way, he's one of my best friends. I think we have known each other since the past 14 years. Yeah. yeah so it was a long time. Yeah. So tell me. Uh, <laughs> You've got a degree in zoology, right? Right. So how did you come to Italy? Was it chemistry lessons? Was it <laughs> European girls? Or was it your <laughs> European good, girls. Your, your good taste of wine? <laughs> well, a bit of all of the above. Um, okay. Yeah, so when I was, um, I went to Humboldt State University, mm -hmm. a little uh, state university in Northern California. And at the time when I was 17, I... Uh, uh, I wanted to do everything I could to get out of Southern California, uh, but I couldn't afford to go out of state for school because I paid my way through school. So I went as far as way as I could and as rural as I could uh, and still pay in-state tuition. So, mm -hmm. um, so I worked my way through college there, um, everything from working in a lumber mill to bartending to working in a bowling alley. And um, played football at Humboldt State. <laughs> and uh, in the in the midst of it, uh, I was doing pre med or pre veterinary in with a zoology uh, degree. So I wanted to get the bachelor's and encompass the pre veterinary to eventually get into Davis. At that time, there was only Davis in California, and if you didn't get into Davis, mm -hmm. you had to go establish out of state, you know, a residency in order to get in another college. And and so. Um, you know, it, it, it was a fairly cutthroat, um, uh, you know, chemistry, your basic chemistry, biology, zoology, all of those, you know, the chemistry courses, like every undergrad chemistry course uh, in the sciences, they, uh, um, you know, they tend to weed you out pretty quickly, you know, 120 students and, you know, in the end of the semester, you're 35, you mm -hmm. know, and, and, and so I survived and I was very proud of surviving chemistry, <laughs> all four courses of five unit chemistry, but I got C's all the way through. And it just essentially, long story short, that those 20 units of C's sandbagged me out of any chance of getting into Davis at the time. So um, I still wanted to be a veterinarian, so I had to look for other sources. And so there was a plan to go up to Oregon, coach football after I got done playing football at Humboldt State and establish residency and try to get into Oregon State. Uh, but the other opportunity came up was to go to Italy and there was this group in New Jersey, a nonprofit group sending students to New Jersey, or to New Jersey, mm -hmm. sending students to um, Italy, Hungary, or Mexico. And I figured, hmm, Hungary, maybe? Yeah, Budapest, might be. Uh, Mexico, no, I got enough of that in Southern California. So I thought, um, uh, Italy sounds great. So <laughs> Far away. <laughs> yeah, far away. And yeah. at that time, there was a student loan program, the NDSL yeah. at that time, you could... Uh, you could uh, finance your way to um, to uh, schools outside of the United States, and so great. So I took out a student loan, which took forever to uh, to to actually manifest into actual usable money, um, uh, and I went to Italy. I figured if it didn't work, um, then I would just travel Europe on my student loan, come yeah. back and get a real job. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so it's. Uh, uh, yeah, Sparky liked that idea. Yeah. <laughs> but you're still keeping contact with your internal medicine professor. From yeah, the, yeah. You must have been a, a pretty amazing student. Uh, right? No, no. I, I actually, when I, the, the funny thing about chemistry, I started yeah. at the University of Naples and then transferred to University yeah. of Bologna. And, and when I was at Naples, uh, you know, and I, it was 56 exam, 56 subjects and 36 exams over the five, mm -hmm. five and a half year program that they have over there. So the first year you redo some of your general sciences, which I had done, one of yeah. which was chemistry. 
And so even though I seed 20 units of chemistry across the board, when I'd learned it in Italian, I actually understood <laughs> chemistry and I aced it. I aced chemistry in Italian right, right off the bat. So, you know, it was, uh, it was an interesting sociological experiment. But um, yeah, and then I transferred to University of Bologna um, and uh, we, I was speaking with Dr. Mario Cipone today, um, very wonderful head of uh, clinical sciences there. At, at Bologna, and they, he was one of the first ones to bring CT into into veterinary medicine mm -hmm. at that time when, when I was there. Um, and uh, they had the, well, the four slice CT back in the day. Yeah, it was one of the yeah, first yeah, ones, yeah. you know, I graduated in 96, so it goes back a ways. But that's where I, he's where I got the passion for ultrasound. I, he okay. showed, he showed, you know, I saw my first heartworm on an ultrasound yeah. uh, that he presented and said, okay, I'm hooked, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's, okay. it's, it's, it was not the mechanical probe that you used for massage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it may have been a mechanical probe back then, that's, that's very possible, that's very possible. But, uh, so that's, that's how I got to Italy and then I, I, um, uh, I graduated from Bologna and, and uh, taught my class, I was very fortunate in that, in that fashion. Had a lot of great, great colleagues, um, friends that I met, yeah. and uh, still have collaborations with the university that's there, and, and collaboration with Europe, as you know, that's how we met. So I've yeah. always, always yeah. gone back and forth and, yeah. and gave Europe as much uh, yeah. of my time as I, I've given the United States as far as you know, absorbing yeah. my scholastic history yeah. and, and research and so forth. And yeah. It's yeah. always better to have the best of both worlds. You yeah, know? and I think the wine is better at ECVM yeah. meetings, right? It, it, yeah, yeah, well, that's the yeah. thing about ECVIM and FD. <laughs> you know, ECVIM, if you don't know, it's the European version of ACVIM, and no offense on ACVIM, but ACVIM, you go and you get a box lunch, you yeah. know, and it, whereas at ECVIM, there's a nice buffet and yeah. fine wine, and, you know, and they, you're in cool places, you know, where we met in Porto, yeah, Portugal. Porto. 2009. 2009 it was, yeah, yeah, yeah I was given some abstracts yeah. there, you know, and, and and I met we met I met Remo Remo Lobetti at the yeah. first ECVIM I think it was 2008 or 2007 yeah. in in um, uh, in um, Amsterdam Amsterdam absolutely yeah. Yeah. yeah so I mean really cool places to go yeah. and 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 Remo and I have a friendship you know that lasted to today he's one of our specialists and mm -hmm. you know it's it's amazing the um, the friendships I mean I was totally fish out of water yeah. going over but I just threw myself into it and said hey you know I want to find out yeah. what this what the Europeans do yeah. from a medicine standpoint yeah. you know and from a radiology standpoint you know as well as I do that yeah. they've been doing CT like we've been doing ultrasound yeah you know yeah. and 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 so the 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 advancements that they have in the clinical applications and CT and diagnostic imaging are are, are amazing. They're yeah. so far ahead of a lot of things that we and do. And it's especially amazing. I mean, when we met, you just talked about building up a platform, yeah? right? And now you get one of the most uh, of the biggest telemedicine companies in the world, right? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's been a crazy ride. I mean, we met we met in Porto, and yeah. you know, you were just starting. I mean, obviously, yeah. you're the veterinary MacGyver, so you already had a nice nice archive of cardiology, and I needed an archive of cardiology yeah. for to create the original yeah. platforms and foundation of uh, of Sonopath, and and we collaborated from then on, and yeah. and. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's been a it's been a great ride, and you know that was that was just an idea. But, you for, know? but first of all, you were in general practice. And you did, yeah, I was in general practice uh, two years in yeah. California and two years after I did the UCFEG. Um, you know, foreign graduates, you had to do all that, and that was all a, a bundle of uh, yeah. a bundle of fun. But um, then did uh, two years in a GP in Southern California. Great mentors, yeah, yeah. Uh, Doctor uh, Doctor Hempel, and um, and in that group and um, uh, Lake Elsinore Animal Hospital, hey guys, if you're listening, um, learned how to sink a catheter really well. I learned how to do some really good surgery and got, yeah. got pretty good at soft tissue surgery and yeah. a little bit of orthopedics yeah. and then went to, uh, and then brought ultrasound to that practice and you know, oh, made okay. most of my mistakes those two years, That's I think. Good. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to make mistakes in house, yeah. you know, in house when you cut yeah. it and it's like, oh, well, maybe that wasn't yeah. what I saw, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then in Connecticut for a couple of years, and uh, Dr. Jessup at mm -hmm. uh, at um, Lake Elsinore Animal Hospital learned a lot of good uh, good economics and and how to balance your checkbook from a business standpoint from him and and uh, you know so those are good good yeah. solid life skills you know yeah, of and, course and and I I think also by being boarded by the AVVP helps you a lot in your attitude towards your clients right right because your your way of 
of solving a problem might be different from the standpoint of a radiologist, right? Well, because you yeah. know these problems because you had to deal with them yourself. Right? Well, yeah, I mean, everybody's everybody has a different approach, and yeah. you know, uh, most radiologists that I know, at least yeah. in the United States, they their their clinical medicine. I mean, they're reading radiographs yeah, and CT yeah, and MRI yeah. all the time, so it's not like they're it's they're not. on top of the animal and yeah. you know solving medical issues and so forth. Whereas ABVP, it's you have surgery, in depth surgery, incept, internal medicine, diagnostic imaging, and you can kind of and, and a number of other things. Neuro and derm, I just left by the side. I took <laughs> you know I took that took the exam on that and then mm -hmm. left it you know because it wasn't my forte. But yeah. but the other things you know when you combine those things and you've been a general practitioner, you you've been working. With the clients and you've solved yeah. the problems, you can really identify with the telemedicine clients, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know it's like you know uh, cognitively being in the foxhole with your clients, right? Of course, yeah. and and yeah. but taking it to yeah. another level. And and uh, my my yeah. mentor here in New Jersey when I took the job in 2001 in mobile sonography, yeah. Dr. Mark Skills was already a uh, ABVP then yeah, and, yeah. and and so I kind of followed his footsteps and he didn't he didn't publish a lot and lectured here and there but um, he was kind of stifled you know yeah. uh, a bit but his archive was insane I always I, I, you know I'd walk into his office and he has all these all these videotapes of all this pathology sonographically I'm in mean, a huge library yeah. and I remember thinking boy if this was out there and published we'd be practicing differently because you yeah. know when you're practicing ultrasound all day long you're scuba diving all day long instead of sitting on a boat and trying to fish yeah. you know and, and so you're, you're seeing things differently than yeah. with a different perspective than you would as a general practitioner doing your clinical exam and all the rest, which is all what we're supposed to do. Yeah. But when you're cheating with ultrasound, I mean, it really is cheating. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're looking directly at what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so uh, I've never cheated in my life, but I yeah. cheat on a daily basis with a probe in hand. And I really appreciated your way of identifying shunts. Yeah. Because I learned it from you. Oh, thank you. Thank and you. I'm able to diagnose shunts in a minute, right? <laughs> yeah. It's just your concept. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, I'm, I'm a big believer in simplifying yeah. the complex because, you know, going through the curve uh, of various times from cardiology, yeah. for example, we just finished our cardiology seminar, and I, I said I took cardiology at, at Sound Technologies three times. Yeah. You know, back in 1998, 99, 2000. And you published in cardiology. Published in cardiology. I just uh, went through your, your, your publication list. It, it covers, I think there's three publications about cardiology topics. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're, those were old ones back in the day. But yeah, technically I have published in cardiology. Yeah, which is fine. Uh, funny, yeah, and 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 uh, you were always ahead of time, right? Also in terms of establishing a specific protocol, right? right. You established a protocol, and many years later, something was published supporting the need of a protocol, and and supporting that also technicians and RDMS are able to achieve the same images, right? Right. So yeah. this is something that. That you were developed many many years ago. Right? Well, yeah, it's it, the the protocol that we do. We trademarked, we've published um, the STEP protocol, abdomen, cardiac. It, it's it's pretty much a, a conglomeration of survival skills of a yeah. mobile sonographer, you know, and just like the shunt protocol yeah. that we have. I mean, that was built out of when you when you get into New Jersey, you have to be right all the time because you got six, seven referral hospitals that can look at your stuff at any second. Mm -hmm. So when you're mobile and doing a lot of volume, which we did because mm -hmm. there's such a concentration of clinics here, you have to figure out a way to get in, get done, get out with the optimized images and not make a mistake. I'm not saying I never made a mistake. I have, but you have to minimize Mm -hmm. the possibility of making mm -hmm. an error because you know you have friendly professionals that some that are going to look at your other stuff and you have unfriendly professionals that are going to look at your stuff you never know who your who your material is going to be in front of you know especially if a surgeon needs to cut something on your yeah, recommendation yeah. you, you got to be yeah. right you know and 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 so it, the step protocol is is there to proactively not allow you to not capture the images necessary to uh, to avoid missing the lesion, mm -hmm. you know, like the pelvic urethra. Make sure you get both adrenals, the pylorus, yeah. common bile duct, GES, all that, all that stuff. And of course, you know, all the all the um, acquired and congenital pathology living in the heart. 
you know, you have all the views associated with that. So if I didn't know what I was getting, you know, I could still get the image capture and then send it to you. It was like, Peter, hey, this looks like a tetralogy, is it? Is it not? You know, and, and you would decipher it out frame by frame and give it back to me. And most of the time, you know, you confirm, but a lot of times it made me look at things in a different way. And, and that's part of the curve, you know, you never stop learning. You, you might as well be six feet under if you start, stop learning because it's, uh, it's the fuel, it's, uh, it's the emotional and cognitive fuel that drives us. Mm -hmm. and, and once you stop, I, you might, once I stop learning, I'm going to learn about wine and food and open a wine bar in Maui. You know, that's, that's what, when, I, when I'm done learning in veterinary medicine, that's where I'm going. So come on by, have okay. a drink. Do this together. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But the shunt protocol was the same thing because, you know, if, when I came up with the probe, um, you know, the idea was, oh, you can't find shunts consistently or you might yeah. get lucky and find a shunt with a probe. I said, no, there's got to be a better way than that. Yeah. And then in the end, when you simplify it yeah. all, you know, 90, 95% of the shunts you can easily find on ultrasound once you know how to get yeah. up into the portal hilus and know what the anatomy is doing. And, and uh, you know, there are some pillars in that, that industry, the Wasaba book, liver book and and um, help me with the um, uh, Amsterdam. Uh, um, 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 uh, Victor. Uh, Victor. Victor Zatmari. Yeah, he was he was great. He helped yeah. me out. Yeah. Uh, so sent me some some of his stuff that he had published. Mm -hmm. So that was a really good platform to move from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Victor was great on that. And 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 then um, you know then simplifying the protocol to everybody who yeah. picks up a probe. If you just follow the yeah. steps, you image yeah. the the images you need to be able to have someone diagnose it that have seen it a lot if you haven't seen it yourself with the probe, you know, and, and um, it's it's actually quite simple most of the time once you get it. And then, of yeah. course, it's nice to confirm it on CT and so forth and confirm it surgically. Of course, of course. Yeah. But it's a funny, two of my DVMs went to a shunt seminar to Germany uh -huh. to learn how to diagnose shunts on, with the probe. And they came back and we got a shunt. Yeah. Excellent. And all my DVMs said, could you please do it because you finished in a minute. It takes them half an hour at least to find it. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's, yeah, it, it, I, I'll, I'll leave that one alone, but it, it's a matter of, you know, we don't, it, when you're doing mobile sonography, the me mentality is you don't have 45 minutes to do a yeah, scan. Yeah, sure. You don't, you know, you got to be in and out in 10 minutes or less yeah, and yeah. for each case. And, and if you're not, you don't have a business. Yes, but you know? your approach is problem oriented. Right. Yeah? It's not... Right. To, to make science out of it. Yeah? It's just problem oriented. The patient sure. has a problem, uh, the DBM needs to solve it, and you help him. Yeah, yeah? right, and we so, have the greatest job in the world. If, you, yeah, if we can just, hey, you solve the problem yeah. because we're the bridge and the animal's gonna go in door number one, two, three, or four yeah. after we're done, yeah. you know, but we don't have to manage it. I don't have to cut it. I don't have yeah. to manage the yeah. bile acid spikes. Yeah. I, don't have, yeah. I don't have to do any of that. I get yeah. to go to the next case. So yeah. it's, it's an amazing position to be and in. If, if you were to hire a new specialist, and you would have to explain him or her what your attitude or what atti attitude to the business you expect. What would you say? Um, prepare yourself to be as efficient and get it right um, better than anybody else around you in your circles, and then take it another level and mm -hmm. and and balance your checkbook. You know, mm -hmm. um, uh, those are those are and have a great credit rating. I mean, those are the those are the keys to business. I mean, be really good at what you do. Do that one thing really, really well, you know, and appreciate the other parts of other people that that contribute really well. Have mm -hmm. smart friends concept. Right. And, mm -hmm. and so you can always lean on everybody else in your community and they can lean on you because, you know, if you're really good at something, people are going to want to lean on you and and, you know, help out the people who merit getting helped. You know, that's the other thing, I've, you know, I've helped people I probably shouldn't have. I've paid hard for it over the years. Um, so you kind of have yeah. to screen who you're going to be symbiotic with. Is that person, you know, the type of person you want at your dinner table on a regular basis? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, pretty yeah. much the, do you want to break bread with that person? Yeah, you know, yeah. because when you, when you start mentoring people mm -hmm. to that level, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's important that that you screen them adequately and the people around you screen them because I, you know, yeah. I always wanted to help everybody. And I mean, that's how I grew up. And, and, yeah. but unfortunately you get burned that way. Yeah. I mean, you, you've run into it as yeah. well. Yeah. I mean, and, but the key, once you bring somebody in, like our telemedicine specialists, we have 15 now. And I mean, every one of them, they can come to my dinner table any day of the week. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're really, really good, solid people and they're conscientious and, yeah. You know, they need help, they'll reach out. You know, they don't yeah. jump into stuff that they're not prepared for, yeah. you know, and that's the other, that's, 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 
that's a level of intelligence that's even more important than knowing everything. Yeah. Is knowing yeah, when yeah, you don't yeah, know yeah, something yeah. is a is a huge value, of course, because yeah. you know you get into something that you're not ready for and it's going to be a disaster. I don't care how you try to cover yeah, it up, yeah, yeah. you know. And and one I don't know thing, if I answered your question, but that's yeah, 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 that's that's interesting. And one thing I I really admire about you is you're a businessman on the other side. You're a veterinarian and you're a businessman. Yeah. And ever since I I met you, yeah, you had a certain plan. And you were successful with everything you did. Yeah? Well, not everything, but everything, Honestly. everything within my wheelhouse, you know, <laughs> yeah. because because I went a little bit out of my wheelhouse and a few concepts yeah. and it, it, just horrible disaster. You know, it, it was like it couldn't plug the leak, you know, yeah. <laughs> but but, you know, the, I didn't listen to the old adage to go with what you know, you know, and, and if you go with something you don't know, be prepared to lose it, like throwing the dice at Vegas, because, yeah. you know, but once you know, if you know your stuff, there's always still going to be bumps in the road um, but at least you're gonna know more about how to solve it you know and how to pivot and how to adjust yeah. and you know I mean good business is just knowing really well your sector make sure that the that the client base knows that they need what you have to offer yeah. you know and you don't necessarily have to teach them that they need it because a lot of people all clinics need yeah. CT for example yeah but we have to teach them why they need CT. Yeah. Whereas in Europe, I mean, Europe is different. It's like everybody knows everything needs CT. Yeah. You know, whereas yeah. in the States, it's, it's like you have to teach yeah. them you need CT you need for CT. this yeah. reason. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just where yeah. we're at as a, as a community. And I mean, for me, I'd put a, any sick animal, I'd put a probe and run a CT on everything. You know, and you get to the answer, and and you know, unless it's like an Addison's, you need you need ACTH stem. But I mean, it's it's um, but you have from a business standpoint. You have to, your products need to be something that people already know they need to yeah, get started. Yeah, yeah. And then you can layer it with teaching them what they really mm -hmm. need to make what they do better. Mm -hmm. and, and the other part of it is the great businesses, I think, inspire the clientele. Mm -hmm. You have to inspire the clientele. They got to feel the energy. Yeah. You got to live it. That's why I'm still on the road. You know, I, I, I love being on the road. Yeah, you this know? is very important. Yeah, I think. you got to be in because, the foxhole yeah, to know yeah. what the soldiers are going and, through. And, right? and if you don't do the job by yourself anymore, right. you are unable to teach. Right. People exactly. find it out immediately. Exactly. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't want to be one of those lecturers that's yeah. lecturing stuff from 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah. I, I just Forget don't. It, yeah. You know, yeah. and, and, and I may bring up old images because I don't have another, you know, presentation yeah. like that. But Or to show, you know, the difference between standard of care on image now compared to before. Yeah. But I try to keep that stuff as, as the, the material as, as fresh as possible. Yeah. And, and, you know, having the community of specialists around. I mean, we move stuff. We change. We exchange stuff all the time, which is great. So as a yeah. group, as a community, yeah. we keep each other fresh yeah. on top of stuff, yeah. you know, which is, which a lot of times is ahead of the publications, you mm -hmm. know, which is, you know, the B2 plus stuff yeah. that we've been talking about that we'll talk about the Presently. summit, you know, yeah. I mean, plug the summit, but uh, the B2 plus is, you know, you and I stirred up some, we kicked up some dust <laughs> on the listserv <laughs> this last year <laughs> about, about B2 plus, yeah. you know, and, 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 but that's fun. That's where the fun is, yeah. right? It's that, it's that man for man song, you know, you look into the Breaking eyes of the sun, mama, concepts, that's where the yeah. fun is, right? Inventing something new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You know, you're, we're, we're always building a better mousetrap, and that's yeah. the fun of it. You know, when you lose that spirit, then yeah. it's just a business. You know, that's just a business. And, and you know, I, I, I hope that the staff were 50 people now at Sauna Path. I never yeah. thought that was ever going to be possible. I mean, yeah. We started with, started with one, how, one admin person, yeah. technician, and me. You know, how, how and, you were able to hire so many so nice people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been it's been yeah. it's been fortunate, but the yeah. locker room also surveils itself, yeah. right? You know, so everybody, you know, the coach shouldn't have to enter the enter in the locker room and tell people, you know, what they need to be inspired yeah. about or how they're supposed to be made or how they're supposed to behave. Yeah. The, the locker room should take care of itself, you yeah. know, and it's self surveil, you know. If, Guys getting out of line, you put them up against the locker, you know, and say, hey, get your act together. You know, so so I don't ever have to intervene on that really? very often. Yeah, yeah the, mm -hmm. the locker room takes care of itself. And and, and that's, you know, being in a footballer myself for many years, you, you kind of take that that linebacker attitude sometimes. There's there's tough yeah. love involved with that. But I think, you know? I think and, you're and living important. exactly what you want others to live like. Right? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, the other part of it is, as an as an owner 
operator, mm -hmm. a functional element, mm -hmm. you have to work harder than everybody else. Yeah, yeah. You it's have true. to be yeah. that person. Yeah. You can't you can't have, oh, he's just off vacationing again. Yeah. No, that yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. You lose yeah. you lose yeah. your locker room yeah. that way. Yeah. You know, you have to be working yeah. as hard, if not harder, than than yeah. your hardest work. Yeah. And Otherwise, yeah. you're not appreciated. Yeah. Nobody yeah. will take you ser seriously. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Also, also, when I come to the states for lecturing, yeah, it's yeah. like vacations for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've never been to CES uh, of this quality. Yeah. With all these surrounding nice time. Yeah. yeah. So it's really comfortable for me. Yeah. So. What do you think is so special about about your courses? I mean, well, every yeah. every time you come here, everybody's content, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Well, they go out smiling. Yes, yeah? yes. Well, it's the cannabis dispensary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, seriously though. No. Um, <laughs> when we built the facility, and and we did this before we had the facility yeah. to to emulate the the or to support the the concept but i've always i mean you and i've been to see events all over yeah. the world and it's just this one more room one more hotel i've been to tons of cities but i've been to and essentially i've been to hotels and 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 lecture halls you know i haven't really seen the cities as much as you know, yeah. I, I, one room is yeah. just the same as the other, right? You know, I... I See the I, airport I, and the hotel. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I've been to Kuala Lumpur, yeah. for example. And it's yeah. just, there's another hotel, another lecture hall. Yeah. That was, yeah. and, but it took a hell of a lot of time to get there, you know? But it, it's, those are, those are things where we wanted to create an environment where... Uh, people could relax and be at home and actually yeah. have a vacation, just like you said. And yeah. our and our lecturers, I want our lecturers to come and have a good time, to want to come here. Yeah, you know, sure. not just because they get paid, but because they feel inspired and they feel comfortable. And the environment is is cool. And it's a place you would go. Oh yeah, yeah. we're learning as well. You yeah. know, and and you learn better when you're in a relaxed atmosphere as yeah. opposed to try to force feed yourself the yeah, information sure, right sure. yeah and you meet the attendees at the same level absolutely right? this is i think absolutely we <laughs> have a beer with them and, yeah, and uh yeah, yeah sparky sparky agrees We're with all pulling yeah. on the same side of the road right yeah so, absolutely yeah. absolutely and and it, you know it, i'm a big believer in fine food wine you know it, it live well yeah. learn well really have do, a you, great do, you some, do you sometimes sleep I do. Yeah, I do. Really? Believe it or not, I have a I have an iPhone that says yeah. I'm supposed to. It's bedtime. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I, I've replaced my mother with an iPhone because my daughter put in my little chirpy birds in the morning, yeah. so I wake up nice and fresh. Yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, and, and, yeah. But I do. I do try to get my seven and a half hours, yeah. and you know, there you know, all the travel involved. You know, it's not always possible. But I I hope to be here, knock on wood, for quite a long time, busting chops in the industry and having yeah. a good time and and trying to do the right thing and. You know, uh, um, any, any special plans for the future? Oh, yeah, there are a couple of top secret things yeah. we can't get okay. into yeah. right now. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, let's just say that we, we like to we like to uh, push the envelope for the right reason. Yeah. And, and there are some good things right now. We're working a lot with a combination of CT ultrasound. <laughs> you know, as I mentioned, we have the new CT uh, imaging center here at the education facility. And uh, you know, Sparky, you know, we've we've tested the CT on yeah. him a couple of times, you know, and yeah. and uh, we we want to refine protocols. It's all about enhancing diagnostic efficiency, one of our yeah. credo yeah. trademarks. And 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 you know, you can really get creative with techniques with CT and ultrasound, and and really get to the bottom with it with you know cytology. We've we've got yeah. a slide scanner now, so I mean, we can run through the CT with animal sedated, yeah. scan them, put needles in, do whatever we need to to get the bottom, shoot it out, have an answer back in an hour. You yeah. know. You know, and so you and, can provide your clients from the machine to the settings to everything till the end of the diagnosis. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, we've been doing that really for special. We've yeah. been doing that for for yeah. ultrasound and optimizing yeah. machines. Yeah. You know, to to ensure our clients have the best image set possible, yeah. and that combines well with the step protocol. Yeah. So you know, the telemedicine process is as tight as it can get, yeah. and we're always refining that and ratcheting mm -hmm. that up. But now we're, we're moving towards doing that with CT. And, and combining that with ultrasound. So CT, costs of CT are coming down and we, we charge the, the pet owner a lot less mm -hmm. because we can do it a lot more efficiently. So, yeah. you know, we want it to be accessible to more pet owners mm -hmm. so we can get to the answer. Because, I mean, you can do a workup, a standard workup that'll cost $3,000 yeah. in a couple of days on a sick animal. Yeah. Whereas you run it through a CT yeah. and ultrasound and cytology and 1500, you got your yeah. answers, yeah. Yeah. you know? And so it, it's, it's exactly. you'll pay me now, pay me now, later it's, scenario. Exactly Whereas, the same concept yeah. that we have. Yeah, exactly. You've been doing this. I mean, I'm just, I just stole it from you. Yeah, 
yeah, because you guys have been doing this you, forever. This is why you know? I went to Europe, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not the wine, not the wine. I, no, no, no. <laughs> just, exactly, exactly. Well, I mean, things that, in, when I was at the University of Naples, when they started Vet Med, I mean, things could have gone a completely different angle. I mean, if it didn't work out and I couldn't cut it, learning, learning Vet Med in Italian, I would have just, you know, romped around Europe until the, my student loan ran out, you know? <laughs> I, I'm happy that you were in Italy, yeah. because... Otherwise, I would never have had the mozzarella like the one you brought me. What's but that? The, the mozzarella. That oh, you the mozzarella, me. the fresh yeah. mozzarella from Naples. Yeah, you can't beat that. There's that and a, yeah. that and a bottle of bottle of tarassi is about in a in a in a, in a casareccia bread from from uh, from Naples. There's not a better combination. Yeah. That's a, that's what that's an Italian snack right there. Absolutely, yeah. I brought that brought that up to you up in Austria that that yeah. one time. It was awesome. Yeah, I I'm really looking forward to the next years uh, because I think we'll all always keep motivating each other right? absolutely it's always a pleasure to be here i look forward to be here again in fall thank you so for much for the summer, summit and i hope that you will come to europe again absolutely uh, i you know i i have you a one of the most efficient <laughs> diagnosing now most of the efficient friendships that i have <laughs> <laughs> we are we get the most out of our minutes don't we right yeah yeah well united 40 united 41 is my bus back and forth so you know, 30 and 31 yeah. 30 and 31 for you right and, and so yeah with our, our paths are continuing to cross my across my friend yeah, absolutely okay yeah. then thank you thank really you thank you for interviewing me it wasn't my idea but but this was a lot of fun yeah. and and uh, i appreciate you yeah. and 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 uh ken uh ken couldn't make it of course but he's been a great additive into this concept and ken dr ken leal our president and mm -hmm. and um yeah we'll um we'll continue to do great things yeah all right thank you thank you sir, thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> See you.